Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's talk about Navigator returning data. Okay, so as we reviewed in the last video, we have a screen on our mobile application. We click on it and on something and it takes us to a different screen altogether, not a widget within the material app. It's a different screen altogether. Um, in the previous video, we had a one scaffold and then we switched it to a different scaffold. So if we want to send information from one scaffold to the next scaffold, we did a navigator.push and we could always send information to, through the widget by an argument. You can always do that. So that's not that difficult to send information from one screen to the next screen. But what if you're going to send information back? Okay, so I have a screen right here and I click on something and it shows up a new screen and I click on that new screen and it sends information back to the old screen. Okay, well, why would I do something like that? Um, for example, if you have some type of um, application where you want to, I don't know, specify something, you, you click on something and it shows you a pic uh, so picture of a bunch of cars, you click on something and it shows you a whole different screen, a picture of a car, and then you click on the on a certain section and then in the previous screen, it'll show you clicked on that particular car. So like already viewed or something like that. Okay, so it would take you back to the original. So I, I hope that made sense right there. I made that up on the spot. So let's look at this. Pick, look at, the, look at this example. Pick an option. I click on this. I could choose yes or no. I'm going to choose no. It went, takes me back to the original screen and it does something. So it sends information from the second screen back to the first screen and it shows it up right there in a snack bar. Okay. Um, let me take a look here. So this is not easy for me. All right. So this took a while and I don't have this down hundred percent. And I know I'm saying that in the past few videos, unfortunately it's true and it's kind of getting worse. All right. So let's go through this. Uh, the, one of the big problems I have with this is that it's not logical. You cannot just look at that and go, Oh, okay. That kind of makes sense. It's kind of like, Oh, I just have to remember that's how this thing acts. Okay. If somebody, if any of you has a good idea, how this acts, like it's a, a some way of logically organizing it saying, Oh, for every time you will see something like this, please put it. If you could explain it in like a few sentences or a paragraph, Put it in the comment section because this is one of those things that you just memorize it doesn't make any sense that's just the way it is okay so i'm going to have the material app up here so the reason i'm going to do that is because i'm going to switch screens and the navigator is going to be uh, a navigator object or widget is going to be automatically built from the material app then i'm going to have home screen as a stateless widget i'm just going to have these stateless because to make it nice and simple and, um, and straightforward so return a new scaffold returning data demo right inside of here. And then for the body, I'm going to say new selection button. What's a selection button? Um, I'm going to say it's just a stateless widget and return a raised button. And when I press on it, it's going to take me to navigate and display selection context. And it's going to say pick an option right on there. So when I press on it, it's going to send me here, which is right down here, right? Here is it gets a little bit tricky. Now, if I clicked on this and I just had scaffold.of, we already went through that, right? What would happen? Well, the snack bar right here, show snack bar, would pop right up, okay? But I have something in front of it. I have navigator.push. Okay, wait a minute. So that's a route, correct? So I click on this button and it's going to route me to a new material page route and select a selection screen. And that's going to take me down here to another stateless widget. So what's what's going on inside of here? Couple of things. Number one is if I remove the navig remove this and just had navigator.push, I could click on it, I remove the async, and uh, right inside here, it would send info out, it would send me over to the selection screen. But I need some way to collect information that when I go to the next screen and I come back to here, I need some way to collect that information. So um, how would I do it? I create a variable that's going to basically equal the await. So it, you click on this, it goes through the result equals navigator.push. It'll send you on over, but it will return also a future. So you just have to know that the navigator, it not only has a function 
or a method, it does something, but it'll also at the same time return a future. We have several uh, methods in the past that we've used where they would do something like that. It would do something and it would return like, um, I think like adding to a list. You could, if, if you add to a list, it would add to a list and then return a bool. Like, did it actually work? True or false? If it did, if you couldn't add to the list, it was false. If you could add, it was true. I can't remember exactly the details, but that's just an example of what you could do both. Both push you, route you to the next screen, as well as um, return a future. Again, you just have to remember this. What's the future? The future is going to be down here. So we go to the next screen. This is all nothing new. Click on here. This is nothing new. It goes right here. New center, new column. This should not be new for us, right? But right here, raised button and raised button here and here. This has a period. This one does not. So let's just do that. Okay. And on pressed, navigator.pop. So remember, both of these things, you click on either one of them navigator.pop it'll send you back to the original screen but there's an optional parameter where you can actually return this information gets returned back to the navigator widget right here okay why you just have to remember it now what type is this notice i put a bunch of different things i put true i put a string uh, a bool an int you could put You clicked yes. You could do that. And I'll, um, oh, whoops. Um, hang on, hang on. Uh, you clicked true. Wait a minute. No, that didn't actually work. Let me, let me. Restart that again. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. I'm getting an error. This is the no, whoops. You clicked yes. Um, I did the wrong one, but you get the point. So what this automatically does, it gets this object, whatever it is, again, a bool, an int, a string, whatever you want to get it. You wrap it in a future. You send it back and it gets equaled to this thing right inside here, to this value. Um, and so when you get this information, if you need to do something like that, and now you have the result, you use the await. So we removed the future aspect of it, right? You By using async and await, we remove, remove the future aspect of it. And then we go ahead and we have that variable available. But now that it returns here, then it will go to the next step. Again, that's something that you just have to remember the behavior of what it's actually doing. And then we'll do the scaffold dot of the scaffold of the way up here. Scaffold dot of snack bar, new snack bar, duration, content, content, new text, you clicked, result. And that's from the snack bar in and of itself. It brings the snack bar that back up. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. It's We'll just have to remember this. I think we might have to um, run through several of these in the future themselves, but we just remember the syntax of it, how it actually works, and use this just as a reference that you might have to use in the future. Maybe we'll run into this concept again in the future, and we'll keep going from here to get more familiar with it, just like we did for all the visual um, widgets that we did in the past. Okay? Thanks.